Hey there, welcome back to Reddit Dating, the best channel for Reddit cheating stories. Be sure to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification for more stories like these. Now, let's get into the video. Ex-wife tries to frame me for theft. She fails. I'll admit that this doesn't quite rise to pro-revenge levels, but it is an addition to my previous post here as requested in the comments. At this point in the saga, having lost the custody battle, V is moving to an H to be with her then primary lover, now husband number 5. A detail that amuses me to this day is that he shares the same first name as the FB lover from CA as mentioned in my first post. I always refer to them as Paul number 1 and Paul number 2 when talking about them. Yes, I'm easily amused. About a month after the custody hearing at which I got full physical custody of Rebecca, V and I had an email exchange in which we agreed that I would go to her apartment and take Rebecca's captain's bed and some of Rebecca's belongings the day before movers arrived to pack up Voldemort's stuff. She was moving 75 miles away to Central NH, having burned pretty much every bridge in the area. As Sam drives a truck, he graciously agreed to come along to both help and to be a witness. So we get there around 7.20 p.m. and knock at the door. After a brief wait, V opens the door, iPhone glued to her ear. She sullenly mumbles something about her stuff is upstairs, and then heads off to her second-floor bedroom, weaving and mumbling something that made me stop and think. I didn't quite get it, but I recall thinking, I really cannot go in here at all without a witness. I stick my head out the door, Sam, come on. You need to come in with me. So we go in. Holy crap. It's a tip. It's not quite filthy, but it's beyond cluttered. By now V has disappeared into her room, complete with slamming the door, so it takes me a bit of wandering to find Rebecca's room. It's not just that she's in the middle of packing, but there is crap everywhere. Dust, cobwebs, tracked in dirt, unwashed dishes, empty boxes of wine, dry dog food scattered and trampled underfoot. I could see that it's quite a nice place. An open living area with a balcony overlooking it, and lovely woodwork, and exposed beams and inset shelves in the walls. An antique wood stove on a hearth is blazing away. Really, lots of potential. But a tip nonetheless. So Sam and I start gathering up Rebecca's stuff, and take some stuff out to the car. I realize we need an Allen wrench to take apart the bed, so I go out to the car to get one and come back in. In the lull in activity, she had come back into the living area, but went right back into her bedroom as we climbed the stairs, phone still glued to her ear. It takes a bit, but we finally get the bed taken apart and have moved most of the stuff in Rebecca's room out to the front lawn. Without conferring, it's clear Sam and I both decided to get the stuff to the front lawn and worry about packing the vehicles after we're completely out of the house. It's at this point that it starts to get weird. Sam is carrying out the second-to-last load when V pops out of her bedroom door, looks out from the balcony, and says why are you taking stuff out of my house? Sam drops what he's carrying and exits the house. He knew what was up instantly. I come out of Rebecca's room, and V clearly didn't realize I was still there, and say, you agreed via email that we would take Rebecca's bed tonight. She looks startled and says, is that Rebecca's stuff? Of course it is. You said her stuff was in her room. Fine. She goes back into her bedroom. I take what I'm carrying and go outside. Sam says, dude, that's not right. We need to call the police. You're absolutely right. I could tell that Sam was expecting me to object, and he does a double take when he realized he wasn't going to have to convince me. Crowsville Police Department, you're on a recorded line. Yes, hi, my name is Jack Crow, and I live at 321 Main Street here in Crowsville. While I'm talking to the police on the phone, I'm aware of V coming to the door and opening it, and becoming quite agitated as she realizes I'm talking to the police. By the time I finish the following explanation, she has slammed the door and is tromping around inside the living area, heatedly talking on her phone. I'm at my ex-wife's apartment getting some of my daughter's belongings as we had agreed to via email and while I'm getting the last of the stuff out of the house, she suddenly asks, why are you taking stuff out of my house? So in order to protect all parties, I'm asking that a police officer come by to verify with Ms. Crow that she agreed to this and that she is fine with what we have removed from the house. 
An officer will be right there, Mr. Crow. As I'm waiting for the officer to arrive, leaning nonchalantly against the front of Sam's truck, Sam is standing there next to me, just shaking his head. I'm going to call Marie and let her know what's going on. Right about here, V throws open the front door, muttering something about having not gotten all of Rebecca's stuff, and proceeds to deposit another laundry basket piled high with clothes and other items on the front stoop, and then disappears back inside. I start to whistle Pop Goes the Weasel. Most of the stuff we moved is still sitting on the front lawn. We leave it there. After about five minutes the officer arrives. He steps out of the patrol SUV, and I slowly approach him, arm extended to shake his hand. Good evening officer, I'm Jack Crow. Evening, Mr. Crow, Ollie Johnson. We shake hands. I give him a brief explanation of the situation, and he comments that I was right to call him, and that he'll go speak to V. He's up there for about two minutes, and then he comes back down. You guys are good to go. We briefly chat with him, apologizing for having to get him involved, and he replies, no, you did the right thing. If a woman in MA says something bad about you, and you've got stuff dangling between your legs, you're going to be in trouble. I liked him a lot after that. We start loading the rest of the stuff, and he asks, how much more is in the house? Nothing, it's all out here, except that last laundry basket on the stoop that Ms. Crow brought out while we were waiting for you. Oh good. I can't sit here all night. If you guys are good to go, I'll take off. Wait, what's that? What's what? I think I saw a phone in that basket. He shines his flashlight on laundry basket on the front stoop. I walk up to the basket. An iPhone is sitting on the top of it. I pick it up, and it looks like Rebecca's old iPhone 4. It's my daughter's old phone. I'll just take it with us. I carry the basket down to my car and put it in the back seat. Just as I'm walking away, it rings. Incoming call from V's landline. I realize it's V's phone. I pick it up and answer it. Hello? Click. I look at the front. There's a text from Paul number 2 on the lock screen, is he gone yet? Yup, it's her phone. Wait officer, I was wrong. It's Ms. Crow's phone. Could you return it to her? He takes it from me and returns it to V at the front door and walks back down to us. Okay, you are still good to go. I'm going to go now. If you could, swing by again in 15 to 20 minutes, if we're still here, you might want to pull in and make sure we're still okay. Sounds good. You two take care. Not five minutes after he pulls out and while we're still loading stuff, V again pops out of the front door, phone glued to her ear. Is the officer still here? No. Get him back. Why? I want him back. Get him. And back inside she goes. I'm briefly tempted to tell her, if you want the cop back, you call for him, but that little voice in my head says you call, so I redial Crowsville's finest and request that Officer Johnson return to the address. Again, Sam and I assume our waiting positions at the front of the truck. This is why I didn't want Rebecca here tonight. Good call. A few minutes later Officer Johnson arrives. Hey, Officer Johnson, long time no see. He grins at me. She just came out the front door just after you left asking for the police to be called. I'll go see what she wants. He goes up there and V hands him her phone. He talks for a few minutes, hangs up the phone, continues speaking with V for 20 more seconds, and then returns to us. I look at him quizzically. No worries guys, you're still good to go. But I'm going to stay here until you're done. I continue to give him the raised eyebrow. She wanted to accuse you of trying to steal her phone, but I pointed out to her that I was the one to notice it in the basket you hadn't touched yet, and that you were the one to ask me to return it to her. Her boyfriend asked if you could be made to wait until Sunday, but I told him no, they've got three more things to load, and they're out of here. Just finish up guys, we all want to get home where it's warm. We finished up and we all shook hands and got out of there.